Hey everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog, and today I'm going to do the most difficult thing in all of music production. I'm actually going to finish something. I don't know if you can relate, but starting projects is super fun, super easy. Finishing projects is the hardest thing that exists. Maybe you're familiar with this book called The War of Art by a guy called Stephen Pressfield. And in that book, the basic idea is that all of us, when we're trying to create stuff, we've got an enemy force inside of us called resistance. And resistance won't manifest itself when you're far away from your goal, when you're like chilling in the early stages. But as soon as you get close to doing something actually good or actually valuable, resistance will start manifesting itself. And that means that you're going to find excuses why not to go ahead. You're going to find ways of self-sabotaging. You're going to find ways of delaying things. You're going to find ways of finally somehow complicating things enough that you don't finish. And I am just as guilty of this as you probably are yourself. So a few weeks ago, I did a video number one in what I called a series of videos about SNTS industrial banging techno. In that first video, uh, we looked at drums, how to make the drums exactly in that style of industrial techno. That was fun. It ended up in a loop. Cool. Then the next week I did an arrangement. I said, how do we go from this one loop to an arrangement? And at the end of that arrangement, at the end of the second video, I said, cool, now we just let it rest for a little bit. All of our decisions are temporary and we can come back and revisit them if we want. All we probably want to do is a little bit of mix balancing and then finish this track. Now it was up to me to actually do that. So I had already gotten some really constructive feedback from a guy called Matthias Friedel on the techno production subreddit. And so I reached out to him for his expertise because in fact he has worked on the technical side as the mastering engineer for some of SNTS's actual tracks. So who better to give me some technical feedback than him? And what I did was I paid him for a mix consultation. What that means is I basically sent him the final track in as high quality as, as I had it and I said, Please give me some feedback on this. If you were the mixing engineer, what kind of changes would you make? So I paid him for his time and I got some feedback which helps finalize this track but also helps teach me some things because obviously this is a study and I'm still trying to learn the nuances of this myself. But I can share all this input with you today so that together we can see what kind of tweaks a track like the one that we finished in the last video would need to be final. Let's jump into Ableton and look at all of his feedback one by one and then resolve it together. Before we go any further, like the video, subscribe to the channel, sign up for one of our classes on underdog.brussels, or book a one-on-one -on -one coaching with me using the link below. Underdog is a music school where we try to help you make your project better, not just a YouTube channel. So come check out if one of our classrooms is the right solution for you. So here we are in Ableton with the old project open. The first thing we're gonna do is save as for a new version. Now, what kind of things did Matthias say? It's important that he says, generally speaking, I see no reason to overanalyze this mix and throw tons of suggestions at you as your idea about the mix is clear and doesn't call for second guessing. A few beneficial balanced decisions in the mix is all that is needed here, in my opinion. We can summarize his input into four categories. First is overall mix balance, then everything to do with the lows, then everything to do with the highs, then just a little bit of stuff on the mix bus. So let's look at those four categories one by one. First, the overall mix balance. On the overall mix balance, Matthias said that it's driving the limiter a little bit much, so we might ease off on that a little bit, though not too much because it is inherent to the style. So let's do that real quick. There, I reduced one and a half decibels going into the limiter. Later, if it needs to be dri driven harder into a limiter, we can ask the mastering engineer to do that. Then the other big mixing balance thing was the little ARP, the little was a little bit low in volume. Now there's two ways of addressing that. So this is the one that we're talking about. So either we can boost this by about three decibels, or we can instead re-emphasize the upper mids on this. So let's re-emphasize it with an equalizer instead. And we go for about 1200 hertz, a really broad boost of about 2 and about 0.4 Q. That's literally the values that he suggested. So this is a tiny little bit of a boost in the high mids. It's going to bring it forward in the mix and then maybe still do plus one on the gain. Let's see how that sounds. Thank you. 
this is a tiny little nuance in fact it could probably take even a little bit more but let's not go overboard and let's stick as closely as possible to Matthias's suggestion because as you know resistance is manifesting itself and we're finding ways to throw ourselves out of balance so the limiter and the bells were really the only overall mixed balance decisions that he would have questioned. So we can move on to the next category, which is the low end. In the low end, there are two things. First of all, there's the kick, which needs a little bit of shaping. And then there's the rumble, which is a little bit muddy. So let's have a look. On the kick, he suggests a cut at 240 hertz at a Q of 1 and a gain of minus 2, I think. Let's see if this makes a noticeable impact. If you remember, this kick is going into this almost absurd decapitator, right? It's a stylistic choice that I committed to very early on in the design of this track, but we're not going to revisit that right now. So all the amounts need to be viewed with that into account. So we might need to exaggerate this a bit to really hear it. So let's try minus four. Let's try even exaggerate it minus eight. That's kind of wild, isn't it? It's wild to me how little that actually makes a difference when you cut eight decibels here. Thanks to all that distortion, it doesn't do that much. But I might need to, on the group, do the same here. So let's go, uh, what was it, 200? Let me just take, check, 240 hertz, a Q of one. And let's try cutting here. That definitely makes a difference. So let's look at that. Let's do minus two here. Let's do minus three. Yeah, that definitely cleans things up a little bit. He suggested it could lose some impact this way. And if I feel like it's too much of a loss, I could always use a dynamic EQ instead with a slow attack time and a slow release time. The idea is that between the actual punches of the kick, that the low mids or these like uh, 240 hertz would get kind of scooped out. So it's not always so present in the mix. Just to see what that would give. Let's have a look using TDR Nova. TDR Nova is an equalizer, but a dynamic equalizer. You can set yourself a frequency let's say 240 hertz. Then, then you can set a threshold to make it dynamic. And as you'll see, you'll be able to just cut that whenever it's playing. See that? So what we can do here, we can just tweak the attack and release, similar to what Matthias said. So we're going for about 100 here and about 200 in the release. Let's set the Q to one, as he suggested. So we can do with a pretty hefty cut here, I think. Let's check it out. That definitely cleans things up in the low mids. Okay, let's let's leave that on there for now. Even though it's not literally on the kick, it's on the group. Let's leave it there for now because I liked what it did there. And let's check when we re-enable the other elements if that is actually doing the right thing. Now, the second observation is that there's quite a lot of boxy content in the area between 150 and 900 hertz. That's really a lot of the mid-range, right? So the, the mid-range is a little bit like over crunched with everything that's basically coming out of this drum group which shouldn't surprise us because that's what the decapitator is doing right so how can we just get that stuff under control keep the vibe of it but make it less congested in those frequencies well the method that matthias suggests is you can either hunt for individual elements which are clogging up in those frequencies and you can just do a, a subtle cut in that area. You can either do it on the bus as well and on either of those you can not only do an EQ cut but you can choose to do something called upward expansion using a dynamic EQ. Now this is a little bit like rocket science for some people. It was a little bit for me to be honest because I'd never considered doing this myself. So first of all let's break that concept down. A dynamic EQ as we just saw in the previous example, is an EQ that only starts to work once there is a lot of signal present in that frequency band. In that sense, it's usually used a little bit like a compressor, but only for certain frequencies, so that when certain frequencies build up, the EQ starts to work and pushes those frequencies down. Now, instead, what we're going to do, instead of using it like a compressor, we're going to use it like an expander, an upward expander, meaning that we're going to cut the frequencies already, like by default, we're going to cut them to a certain amount. 
Then when the frequency wants to be loud, we're going to give it back, but just for the punchy part of the signal, and then drop it back down again in between. That means that the loudest part of the signal stays present, but when it's not at its loudest part, it's going to get scooped out quite a bit in those frequencies, in the low mids, and that's really where we want to create some clarity. So first, let's figure out which of these elements is probably the culprit, although from what I was doing now at the kick, I'm going to guess we're going to have to work on the group because it's probably the distortion that's really doing this. So let's have a look. That's definitely a culprit. That one's okay. Okay, this rumble might be the thing that could do with this treatment. So let me have a quick look. Okay, moving any kind of EQ across this rumble doesn't make enough of a difference in the sense that uh, really the decapitator is shaping the sound so much that this element is not reacting to an equalizer in the way that you would usually want an element to react to an equalizer. So I think we should heavy-handedly resort to going back to the group. So here we are in the drum group and on this TDR Nova, we're gonna create a second node. And that second node, we're gonna just listen, we're gonna go around and look for the area where we probably wanna de-emphasize the mids. And let's have a look. So let's turn the Q up a little bit higher, something like this. And we're gonna be looking somewhere between 150 and 900 Hertz probably. So let's, let's look for that. Here. There, let's, let's do a little bit of upward expansion there. So what we do is we cut there. Okay, this already creates a lot more of a kind of, um, creates a bit of like a hollow feeling in the mid. So we're gonna give some of that back by setting the threshold, setting the ratio below one, leaving a cut there, and you're gonna see it bounce up sometimes. So the band that we're working with is here. So we're making a big dip here, and whenever these frequencies hit, it actually gets louder. Now, one even further improvement that Matthias suggests is that maybe it shouldn't groove along with the entire groove, it should be sidechained to the kick instead, so that the kick will push this thing forward. So let's try to enable that. There we go, now this thing pumps upwards whenever the kick hits. So let's mess again with the settings to see if we can get it even more pronounced. That sounds a lot warmer and more focused and a lot less uh, papery, maybe. Papery is the word I would use to say how to describe it when it's off. Uh, in the high mids, you can kind of hear this kind of uh, floaty sound a bit more. So I'm gonna just turn it on and off a few more times because I find that this is probably the biggest learning for me in this whole exercise. So this is with the high mids unfocused. Look at that. This is the kind of subtle sound shaping that I think is super exciting about this kind of focused techno. Now the values that I've gone for are a bit, like quite a bit more exaggerated than those that Matthias suggested. But to be honest, I really wanna want there to be no doubt about what we're hearing. So I think I'm gonna leave them like this. I think this was a real step forward for this drum group and it turned a sound that was almost unmanageably wild into something that's a lot more focused on the right frequencies. So let's just say that the low end is done. The next step is the high end. Now in the high end, Matthias had two suggestions. First, the hi-hats from a creative point of view. He says that what's there now sounds scooped 
resonant, ringy, and lo-fi, and that in fact, we could solve this by reducing some of the emphasis on 5,000 hertz and opening it up above 8,000 hertz to ensure that there's a lot more of that really, really crisp high end. Let's have a look in the track to see what the actual high end sounded like to remind ourselves. Now, we shouldn't really be surprised because I probably used a decimort on at least half of these. And on a decimort, what I always do is I end up put it using a low pass filter to roll off some of the ultra highs. So that probably leads to what, what Matthias is describing. So let's have a little let's have a little look at those the frequency bands that he's describing. So at 5000 Hertz, this is what we're listening to. It's that, it's that upbeat hi-hat, right? And these are the frequencies that he says we should probably emphasize more. The ultra highs up here, rather than this. And I think that this guy is probably the culprit, the main culprit of this. So let's have a look. Yeah, let's on this one simply grab ourselves 5000 hertz and make a little cut there we go then this high this low pass filter no idea why i put that on there oh look at that that changes everything let's leave it open but let's put a shelf there anyway and see if we can find a, a spot where it's in balance so okay cool Let's check what else is at this. So I think it's that ride. Let's check out this ride. Yeah, this ride has a lot of energy there. Let's have a quick look on an equalizer, what that looks like. Yeah, also that ride with the decimort. I put that filter on there. And so perhaps I can just increase this. Yeah, that works, that works. We'll open up the filter. Now maybe we'll use a specialized tool like Oak Sounds Soothe to just notch out some of the, the resonant frequencies on this. So let's see what that does. So this really makes something sound soft and not resonant, right? That's resonant and that's soft. It's actually quite nice. I really like that. I feel like if we crank it a lot, it stops sounding so much like a ride and start sounding a bit more like splashy energy, which I actually like a lot. So let's listen to the group. Okay, I think between these two, we've addressed whatever sounded ringy here. Let me just check again. Yeah. Yeah, great. I feel like we've really given that back to it. Now, we could boost at like 8000 hertz, as he suggests. I'm going to err on the side of not boosting these frequencies up here, but I'm not going to boost these frequencies with the idea that if my whole track lacks that high end, I feel like a mastering engineer might decide with more confidence to put like a shelf on the master and just bring up the high end of the entire track. Right now, I feel like if I boost just the, the hi-hats, it's going to bring the high end of my track out of balance compared to the crunchy high end of the drums and everything else. Now, another suggestion that Matthias had about the high end was reverbs. I don't have that much reverbs on my stuff and SNTS does. And I'm thinking probably just I can splash a bit more on the hi-hats. So what will I do? I'll add myself a nice little reverb. Let's use the Max for Live Convolution reverb. Now, let me put this thing in parallel. So let me put it at 100% wet and group it put the dry signal on its own chain. And then I have full control over this. And I think that what I want to do with this is I, do, I don't want to make the whole thing muddy, especially not in the mids. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to emphasize the sides of this reverb. I'm going to put like a mid side matrix on here, which gives me control over the mids versus the sides in terms of volume. And I'm just going to boost the sides a little bit. Check this out. Good Hertz. They've got this mid side matrix. There we go. And all this does is mids versus sides. So let's solo this. Great. Turn down the mids, turn up the sides. 
and together. So this is dry, this is really wet, and now let's bring down the volume of this a little bit. Wow, this is massive. Dry, wet. In context. Boom. I feel like maybe I could just go completely nuts and copy this entire thing over to the mids. Let's see what happens if I put this stuff on the mids. Really not bad. However, in the mids, I want to avoid a buildup of too much more energy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop out the, the mids. So like here. So that just adds some ambience. If it feels a bit unnatural, so maybe I'll just refocus a little bit. That's okay. And now another thing that I'm noticing now is that perhaps this grit instrument is maybe contributing to the feeling that the middle that the mids around 500 hertz are a bit congested. Let's check this out. So now we're revisiting a little bit the low end thing. Let's check that out. This one. Oh, look at this for sure. Oh, look at this. I already tried to address some of it. However, Honestly, I think we could maybe just go and take that TDR Nova, copy it over to the grid instrument, see, see how active it, it goes. Side change from the kick still. And in context. Yeah, I think that 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 scoops out a little bit of those low mids as well, makes the whole thing pump along with the kick, and probably gives the whole thing a bit more focus, so that this grit instrument feels like it's part of the core drum groove and not just something that's sitting on top. So we've dealt with the overall balance, the lows, the highs, and now the last thing was just a suggestion on the mix bus, which was a tiny little bit of bus compression on the mix bus before we go into the limiter. Matthias suggests putting Kotelnikov, which is a compressor. Now, the target here is to get about one decibel of gain reduction on this. So let's look at it. Now, as far as I can tell, this is just the kind of bus compression that you would probably also do with an SSL compressor. Like the kind of bus compression where you have the long attack, short release, and the idea is just to give your master bus some kind of global dynamic movement so everything is pulsating along with each other, responding to each other, but also letting through all the transients so that it's all still quite punchy. Uh, doing a little bit of gain reduction before everything goes into the limiter. One decibel of gain reduction is something that most of us are going to really struggle to hear. But in this case, I think we can really just take his word for it because I see plenty of mixing and mastering engineers doing this kind of thing on a regular basis. So I'm going to consider this one slightly above my pay grade and accept it as just one of those 1% improvements that are really hard to hear, but are part of the magic toolbox of mixing and mastering engineers. Now that's all the feedback that Matthias had. I'm going to leave his details over here again in case you want to get in touch with him for a similar mix consultation. Just reach out to him by email directly. The last stylistic thing that I might change based on a correct feedback from one of the YouTube commenters was that lifting up that high pass filter for the turnaround every time it gets a little bit stale and a little bit repetitive. So I'm going to just do it slightly less often. See, it's these little these little bumps every single time. In the end, it gets a little bit predictable. So I'm just going to remove some of these bumps. I think we can do without them. There we go. We still regularly use it as a technique, but not quite as often. I'm going to save this. Now, I'm going to export this. I'm actually going to have this mastered. I'm going to give it a name, put it up on my SoundCloud for free. You can download it there if you like. I release techno myself under the name TORC, T-O-R-C. You can find my contact details here. If you enjoyed this study, let me know in the comments. Come say hi to us on Discord. And like I said, consider if one of our classes is for you. Until next week, stay safe, keep producing, and be good. Bye-bye.